You've decided to take your kids and the neighbor kid to the beach for a fun afternoon in the sun. You're lying on a towel, a cool towel on the hot sand. Your eyes are closed. You can smell the salty air wafting off of the ocean. You can hear the waves crashing ever so gently just feet, a few feet away. When all of a sudden the neighbor kid dumps a pail of sand in your face. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rowena Starling welcoming you to the Save Your Breath Show where we help parents eliminate the stress and aggravation of raising children, well actually parenting because sometimes they're not children if they're like 40 or 50 years old, whether your child is five or 50. Today's show is about techniques versus your calling as a parent. I like to go over the calling because the calling is one of the beginning steps in the family system that I have created for parents. I want to thank you for allowing me to come into your homes or your handheld device. <laughs> it's really kind of um, humbling for me because there were so many years when, you know, I just was not the best parent in the world, you know, and that's the, that's the least of it. I wonder now whether you out there, the ones who are listening, have a need for help and you just have difficulty finding it. Many parents engage in their, their duties and they have to put up with endless amounts of uh, rude interruptions like the, the sand in the face <laughs> or just a constant picking at their nerves when they're trying to engage and, and, and enjoy, their, enjoy their parenthood uh, situation. So because of all of this stress and the picking at them and the rude uh, interruptions in their flow, they feel like this whole parenting thing is some sort of cruel joke that they have to put up with the pain of parenting endlessly and endure it uh, because it's necessary. But really, it's deeper than that. If they would just realize that their parenting is a calling, then that would shift, that would shift their whole context of what they're doing in parenting. And the rude occurrences would begin to diminish and there would be more joy and beauty in their experience. So I wanted to just let you know that the whole thing about a technique versus the calling is a bit of a ploy on my part because <laughs> don't you think we parents need everything we can get our hands on? So if it's a technique, give it to me, right? Of course, we were always looking for techniques to make our lives easier. So I'm not really down on techniques. I just feel that we tend to seek them out and try to use them, you know, too often. So what do I mean by uh, the calling. Do you like the idea of being a good to excellent parent? Do you like that heartfelt aspect of parenting and you just love it to the point of distraction? <laughs> Are you dissatisfied with parenting by default? Through the work that I have created, over the last 30 to 40 years, I've developed a set of skills that allow me to engage in parenting um, in such a way that my whole experience is enhanced in a good way. And because of these skills, I'm able to now apply them, and, and as, I, as I functioned, I actually applied them 
to other aspects of my life, personally and professionally. So I wonder if you have uh, a set of skills that you're using that enhances your, your, your experience as a parent that uh, simultaneously benefits your personal and your professional life. For instance, in the early years when my son was much smaller and uh, he was in you know, elementary and middle school when it was really starting to hit on me because I had been divorced, I was depressed, I lost everything. So in that drama of my life, of course, I was forced to ask for help. And I was having to ask from within because outside help, I was totally oblivious to it because of what I was going through. It's sort of like being forced to your knees, you know what I mean? So I had to ask from the inside. And as I got my answer, I could hear the voice saying, parenting is a calling. So as I am fixing my situation and going in with my meditation to handle it, to handle the parenting part, because I was really focused on the fact that I was not being able to do my job. <laughs> the center of my worry was my child. As I was handling that, other things in my life started to fall into place. So that's basically uh, what I was speaking of. Calling in this context of parenting is having a strong inner impulse to be the best parent that you can, accompanied by the conviction of divine influence. It is as if God is saying that I'm putting you in charge of my progeny. You see what I mean? So when I speak of divine, when I speak of uh, a calling, I'm speaking of that divine aspect of who we are and that connection that we have that answers why calling is important. Why the emphasis on the calling? Because it's the divine, that divine conviction that makes it easier for you. When we ignore that aspect of ourselves, we're making it more difficult. And a lot of people have experiences in parenting of, of oh my God, this is hard. Well, it's hard because we tend to not recognize our calling, that divine peace. That's the peace that sets you free. It renders you in a space that allows you, you step back a little bit and kind of allow yourself to flow with it because you're not in charge of everything and, that's, and you recognize that and know that because you, know, you recognize your calling. It's the divine influence that gives you the juice to sprint and engage and have the energy and the joy and the glee that you need to do your job. And the beauty of that whole thing is <laughs> as you're splint, sprinting, you're taking your child with you. Because what's happening? They're watching you. They love you. They want to do what you do. And if they see that you are in joy and in glee and it's genuine, well, actually, they don't know if it's genuine or not. But, <laughs> but the point is, then they want to have that. They see that that's the way to be. That's the way to go. And so they mimic that. Isn't that what you want? Have that be real for yourself. When we frame our parenting experience as a calling, we're able to make it easier on ourselves. I can't say that often enough. We allow the winds of divine purpose to blow through our activities and we engage our creativity when it's time to deal with a disciplinary issue or some sort of problem. 
supporting the family. And we inspire our offspring on our and our children, if they're still children, uh, to curry our favor. <laughs> that means that they cooperate with what you want them to do. <laughs> Why? Because they're digging on who you are and what's going on, and they want a part of that. For example, I have a client, uh, by the way, um, when I speak of my clients, when I use their name, it's not really their name. <laughs> I change the names to protect the innocent, so to speak. Uh, my people come to me and they have many times very painful issues that they're dealing with. And they don't want people to know that they need this kind of help. You know, they don't want those questions. They don't want people to know that. So it's a matter of um, uh, keeping their confidence. Um, so the names have been changed. I won't use the name today since I've gone through that. In any event, <clears throat> I have a single mom. She has three boys, under t all under 10 years old, 10 years and younger. And as you can imagine, she really loves these kids. But... They drive her crazy. In fact, she told me when we first started working together that she thought that parenting was a cruel joke that God plays on us to amuse himself or herself. <laughs> you know, some people think of God as possibly female. I think both because they're both genders represented here and we're made in the image. Okay, I digress. So... I had to laugh at that because I felt the same way for a long time, <laughs> dealing with my situation, with my son. And I only had one. I don't know what people do with two and three. My God, some people have 10 kids. There's a whole science behind that, too, you know, the older ones helping and so forth. But still. <clears throat> so she said she felt like she was walking postpartum depression for six years before we met. <laughs> you know, it occurred to me that not only did she feel that, she actually was. So after a month of working together, her depression subsided. She was able to breathe a little easier, breathe again. No? <laughs> Save your breath has a, a purpose. <laughs> um, her children are still wild. I mean, you know, they're little boys. Uh, but they had chilled. They had chilled because mom was now in a space where she recognized her calling. They were actually enjoying quiet time together. And she said, honey, I, I, understanding that I had been called to be a parent gave me perspective as a hero. It empowered me. I, I thrive. And I can now see my, my children as, uh, you know, the um, uh, charming mischief that they are. <laughs> Well, would you like to have that perspective on, <laughs> on your children? <sighs> the thing about it was that she had chilled out. Her sons picked up the fact that she had chilled out. They were calmer. They were more cooperative. And now they were hanging out together. I'm really pleased with that result. And obviously, she is. So... How do we absorb this, this uh, attitude of uh, the calling as a parent? Well, instead of you know, looking for the constant technique uh, of something to do, you know, in terms of you know, straightening out problems with your parenting. Make a note of this. Integrity is the hero's way. <laughs> and you are heroes. All parents are heroes. Whether you recognize it or not, whether you're engaging as a hero or not, 
That's what you are. You've been tapped. So the way to embrace this experience as a calling is to step into your integrity. It reinforces your core values. Examine what you really want for yourself and for your family. This allows you to, just in examining that and in establishing that and then planting it into the core of who you are, it has already started to come to pass, to be the way it is that you want it to be. You'll notice that problems just tend to smooth out. You know, the wrinkles of your life during the day just sort of smooth out. This is what we want. <laughs> and the root of the integrity is the calling. That still, quiet voice that whispers, I trust you to bring up my progeny. I will give you the help you need. If we're not quiet enough to feel that and hear it, then we're constantly banging our heads against the wall, against all kinds of problems, attracting problems that didn't have to be there, but because <laughs> that's what we believe needs to happen, there it is, because it's really all about what it is that we believe will happen. You, my hero, you want what is in the gap of the extremes that we experience as parents. You want out of hell and the feeling of being a slave, uh, feel like being in prison. You want out of that. And you want all of heaven and freedom. You want out of debt, depression, and arguing. <laughs> and you want all of positive outcomes and peace and love. To get from here to there, you need to assess your current position. Assess your current position and move through the paralysis and the disappointment to meditation, relief, and surrender. And when I say surrender here, I'm not talking about, you know, like hands up, Give me your jewels. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, like an act of uh, the spoils of war. <laughs> when I say surrender here, I'm talking about um, surrender the wheel you're driving into a wall. <laughs> right? I mean, we're driving, this, we're driving this vehicle, this parenting thing, and my goodness, some of us are running red lights and banging in the walls. So, <clears throat> do you know that techniques, and, you know, they have their place, but you have less need of them if you're coming from a place of power. It's amazing the things that shore up when we get our inner space handled. When we do that, the outer space gets resolved. And uh, people call it, uh, you know, well, actually it's preferred to be called miracles, you know, miraculous stuff, because we are mir mir walking miracles, right? So it's just kind of magical. The word magical is more familiar to people. It's kind of magical how that works, because you're tapping into that communication, the real thing, the real deal that gets the job done. If you are feeling um, less than the hero than you, that you are, it probably means that you're not meditating or doing your favorite uh, you know, thing that gives you your air and feeds your power. Or, or if you're doing it, then perhaps you're not doing it enough or with a certain level of depth that you need to have 
to change, to, to get the change that you're looking for. And then here's a point, too, that's very important. Whatever that thing is, are you teaching it to your child? <laughs> yeah, we, we want you to put the mask on yourself first, but please don't forget to put it on your child. <laughs> you know, that's part of the reason that the shift changes and things improve. It's because it's a, it's a whole family situation. It's a one organism, you know, functioning uh, on the same plane with the same practices. Do you have fears, anxieties, and phobias that are holding you back from doing what it is that you know you need to do? You know, you just kind of know it, but, oh, I don't have the energy for it, or for whatever your reason is. Would you like to pluck that sucker out? I can help you do that. In minutes, rather than months, in years. Even if you've been living with it for decades, it does not have to live with you for another couple of decades or forever, provided you even want to get rid of it. Some people don't. Once you pluck it out, you feel a fresh opportunity to move forward with ease. So what if you say, eh, I'm not sure about this whole calling thing. I'll just keep the status quo. <laughs> well, are you feeling tired? Then you get to keep fatigue and mishaps and sand being dumped in your face. <laughs> because on the other side of fatigue is the breath of fresh air that you're looking for. The energy, the infusion of energy that you're longing to have, really need to have, more than want to have, you need to have it. And you get cooperation from your babies that, uh, you know, that's a lot better than it was before. Not that they've become suddenly perfect or anything like that, but what we want is an improvement that allows us to do our ease and finesse thing. <laughs> There's a saying, fear knocked at the door, faith answered. <laughs> there was no one there. The same thing applies to what's going on with our money issues. The money boogeyman is in the closet, and you open the door, and there's no one there. Imagine a world where all of us parents <laughs> are functioning with the knowledge that we have this divine calling, the calling to bring up the next generation of heroes. <laughs> Can you see the world peace, the opportunity, if we seized the moment to have us all recognize that and change the context of how we operate as parents, knowing that it's a divine calling? World peace, collectively, we can make that happen. This is a call to arms to parents who treasure all that's holy and sacred. Parents who are willing to fight against parenting by default, willing to give up fear and anxiety, and just generally feeling crappy. <laughs> of the ones called, a heroic task awaits them, bringing up the next generation of heroes. Be the light that shines on the path to prosperity and joy for your children. 
for your progeny. Well, I am offering a complimentary parenting breakthrough session for all of you stressed parents out there. It's a $250 value for free. And I also offer a get out of stress and uh, fear session that is not complimentary. Sorry. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for watching the show. And um, you can follow the link to the sessions to connect with me. Just do the process there, the, um, the parenting assessment there. And um, it's at saveyourbreath101.com forward slash parenting dash assessment. You can contact me through there doing the assessment. And um, I look forward to seeing you next time on the Save Your Breath Show. Thank you.